Before we start the video, you should know that the Dodge Charger Hellcat Red Eye is an absolutely amazing car. However, the audio in this video, not so amazing. So please accept my apologies and please enjoy the video. If you're a 717 horsepower four-door muscle car, you're finding a little bit lacking in power, you're going to the drag strip, you're getting your butt kicked all the time. Well, guess what? For 2021, Dodge has come to your rescue because now the Charger Hellcat wide body is available with an additional 80 horsepower and a bunch more torque. Why is that? Well, let me show you. There is a special little red eye right here in the Demon. That is because this is now available as a red eye. That means it gets the engine from the 2018 Dodge Challenger Demon. There's just one thing missing. Am I doing it right? You know what, bad taste is subjective and actually Dodge switched over to pink guards so you'd stop using them, it messes up the paint. But you know what's objective is the additional 57 pound-feet of torque and now 797 horsepower, which is underneath this hood with this special hood scoop for 2021. line lock, but I just prefer to call it burnout mode. And it's pretty cool to have this option from the factory. In fact, the only other car that I can think that has it is the Mustang. So the fact that it's a factory option tells you that this is really kind of a muscle car. Once you're on the SRT pages, you hit activate line lock, shows you what's gonna happen. You got a bunch of smoke on the page, and then you basically just follow the instructions on the dash over here. Okay, so I have my foot on the brake. I'm applying brake pressure, bleeds it off, and I hold the button on the steering wheel, and then you let go of the brake. All you need to do is hit the gas. So you might think that this car is just a one trick pony, that it's just designed to help you go down the quarter mile. And all of that is true, but there's a lot of tech that can help you do that. But first, let's go for a drive. You're hearing a little bit of gravel on the road. That's what that, that noise is. It has rained quite a bit. It's a rare thing in Los Angeles for it to rain. This is my day to film. Oh my God, it's, it's insane how much power and torque is available, available here from basically all the way across the red band. Just all power, all the time. It's crazy. Oh, so good. It's so good. 2.7 liters gives us that extra torque, extra horsepower that we didn't really need, but we really wanted anyhow. Oh, that supercharger wine. Yeah, this car is absolutely bonkers. It's absolutely insane. There's no reason for it to exist. And I love it. And I, keep, I hope the Dodge keeps making more of these. The character of it is just a big wall of torque, a big wall of power, pretty much all across the rev band. The power does build as you get a little bit higher into the rev band though, it's quite impressive. This revs out to 6,500 RPM versus the uh, regular Hellcat motor, which only goes to 6,300. Dodge has done some work on the valve train to make it a little bit more stout, a little bit more sturdy and able to handle a little bit more abuse. So it's really comfortable. It's really comfortable. The ride quality is, is excellent. I think it's, it's a little bit firm. It has different settings. I'm in the automatic mode, which is the most comfortable mode. And it's firm, but it's not luxurious. Oh, 
way. This thing builds speed really fast. The transmission is great. This is the 8HP, it's the ZF 8HP 90, which means this can handle the most torque of any of the ZF transmissions. And it needs it because this thing has a lot of torque. You can program it for different uh, shift types. So you have, you've got auto, you've got sport, and you've got track with increasing levels of how long it holds a gear and how aggressive the shift actually is. So is this the perfect Canyon Carver? That's a, a big question that some people have been asking. Uh, the answer is no, but it, it doesn't really need to be. It's incredibly competent in the canyons. This is a car with a lot of heft, a lot of weight, 4,600 pounds. And you know what? Big Bertha, she comports herself really well because she doesn't feel like Big Bertha but it does really stick very well. I've got, I've got no complaints at all. You can really have your cake and eat it too. The brakes are very, very good indeed. It has Brembo six piston calipers up front and you know, the car needs a lot of braking because this has got a lot of power and it can build up speed very, very quickly and stopping is very confident in this car. So yes, if you're wondering about the, the aspect of the car which is dominant, it's definitely the engine. I <laughs> love it, love it, love it. The 6.2 Hemi is the star of the show and Dodge likes to put this engine into pretty much everything. So because this is the red eye and it makes more power, you need to get more heat out and you need to get more air in. So it has this totally functional hood scoop over here. And then you have two functional air extractors, heat extractors on the hood. I love the sound of the supercharger. And now it's bigger. This is now 2.7 liters up from 2.4. Also, it makes more boost. It makes 14.5 pounds of boost and it revs higher up to 6,500 RPM. It now has two dual stage fuel pumps and Dodge says it can drink 1.4 gallons per minute. That means the entire tank of 18 gallons can be emptied in just 11 minutes. When you do runs at the drag strip, it generates a lot of heat and Dodge has found a way to address that. It's called the SRT chiller. There's a button on the screen to activate the chiller. Hit that. And there's a temperature display which shows you the intercooler coolant temperature and you can see your target temperature and also the ambient temperature as well. When you're running it for a little while, you'll get the intake temperature down below ambient or maybe just above. So this is exclusive to the red eye. There's a heat exchanger here and there's a separate pump. So it's got a low temperature circuit and it runs AC refrigerant. And once it's cooled here, it goes all the way over here through these lines and then it goes into the chiller. Once it's chilled down a little bit, then it goes into separate heat exchangers in the supercharger and it can bring the entire ambient temperature of the air down to about 10 to 15 degrees below ambient temperature. If you've owned a high horsepower car before and you step on the gas, sometimes you get axle hop and that can be super damaging because what's happening is the tire rotates, it grips and then it slips again and then it grips and slips and you have this axle hop and it can send really damaging torque through the driveline. You can damage your components, it can be pretty bad. Dodge has something called Launch Assist and it monitors this through the ABS sensors. And how it works is when it senses that there is axle hop going on, it dials back the torque, it waits to get traction, and then it reapplies it and you don't need to let up on the gas for this to happen. And it's actually on all the time monitoring the car. Every SRT charger now gets a wide body. 
And these fender flares add three and a half inches to the car and they are menacing and they are aggressive looking. I think they look amazing actually. And they're actually functional too because this has an 18 by 11 setup for the wheels. In fact, they're square, which means you get the same size front and back. These are 305 Pirelli P0s. So this is the four door, which makes a kind of a functional performance car. This is really the only muscle car, the only four door muscle car in existence, at least Dodge, that's what they say. Not too difficult to get in. Not quite as much room back here as you might expect. This is a very large vehicle, but at five foot nine, I got decent leg room. I got pretty good headroom back here. Materials are very nice. And in the back, you've got the heated seat, individual controls for each side. And you've also got USB and you've got two vents for the heating and ventilation. So the interior is pretty high quality, actually. It's not the most modern interior. I think uh, they could use a little bit of updating. The last update was around 2015. The seats are very comfortable. They're both heated and cooled. You can get them in three different color combinations. This is the tan and black. There's also red, and then you can get black as well. I find it really comfortable. This will seat a lot of different body sizes, ton of space, ton of headroom up front, and you can pretty much get any seating position you need, either close to the wheel or pretty far back. So the dash layout is pretty basic. You do have to do a lot of stuff on the Uconnect screen. This is an 8.4 inch screen. The new Uconnect 5 is a lot nicer. I kind of wish they had included Uconnect 5 in this for 2021, but there you have it. This has an optional carbon fiber package. So you get a carbon fiber inlay, real carbon around the whole center cluster, and then also on the center console as well. The screen does feel a little bit older. It's a little bit slow. I can say Uconnect 4, uh, but uh, pretty much all of the stuff that you want to access, all your performance pages, like the SRT performance page, you do from here. There's one quick trick. If you want to get your customized ride selection, you just hit the SRT button twice and you get into your custom settings right away. So through the SRT dashboard, you're able to configure and adjust your drive modes. And it's actually, oh, there's a lot of configuration you can do here. So uh, you've got track, sport, custom, and auto. When you start the car, you get auto. If you hit the SRT button twice, you're gonna get into your custom mode. And this is the one that you can uh, set up the way you like. And there's a ton of adjustability in here. I don't think the interior is quite up to an $86,000 cabin, but obviously you're getting a pretty different experience than you are with a German car. So you sort of got to make your choice and figure out if this is something that you want to compromise on. The interior is nice, but it doesn't feel to me like it's really a full luxury cabin. It's quite functional, but it doesn't have a lot of flair, a lot of panache to it. This color is called Frostbite and I got to admit, I really like it. I'm kind of a fan of deep blues. And it's cool that Dodge doesn't make a lot of boring colors. Dodge, in fact, makes really interesting, exciting colors. I wish more manufacturers did this. So what is this going to cost you? This is not an inexpensive car. This all spec'd out is about $86,000. And you're running up against some competition at that point. You're getting into the Germans. You're getting into perhaps like an M5. You're getting into maybe a highly spec'd out M4 or something like that. So this is completely different. This is completely American. This is a whole different take on performance. This is a muscle car. This is uniquely American and I kind of dig it. 